Blade, Chu, Arnest, and Sophia strolling around the city together. Previously, Blade was surprised as it was his first time eating a pudding as large as a bucket. During their journey, they come across a carriage whose cargo cannot fit through the bridge passage. Arnest tries to advise the carriage owner to take the highway if it doesn't fit. The owner of the carriage is a blonde-haired female scent or named Dion. Blade seems to recognize Dion, her name is Dion. Dion is surprised to see the hero here. However, before Dion can mention it, Blade stops her first to speak. He informs Dion that his identity as a hero must be kept secret. Arnest is surprised to find out that Blade knows Dion. He mentions that they are old friends. Setting that aside, they offer to help Dion if she's having trouble transporting her cargo. Apparently, the cargo needs to be delivered to the palace. In other words, to the king's or headmaster's location. Just as they finish their task, Dion is immediately given a new mission by the king. She is asked to become a teacher at Rosewood Academy. According to the king, with Dion's strength, there's no problem for her to become a teacher. After that, at Rosewood Academy, the upper and lower class students gathered in the arena. In front of them, Dion and some divine metal are seen. Dion then uses her spear to charge toward the divine metal. Her attack is so powerful that it creates a large circular penetration. In fact, the parts of the divine metal that aren't penetrated melt due to the immense strength. Normally, divine metal is indestructible. As a result, all the divine metal in the arena is obliterated due to Dion. Dion says that was her warm-up. Now she's ready to start the lesson. The students feel pressured witnessing Dion's actions. In fact, she hasn't even introduced herself as the new teacher yet. After being reminded, Dion finally introduces herself. She also reveals her title, which is Dion the Magic Spear. Somehow, Arnie's seems to recognize that title. After some recollection, Dion the Magic Spear was a general who led the strongest army. The students can't believe that someone so powerful would be teaching at this academy. However, Dion remains humble, claiming she's nothing compared to the hero. Dion just becomes more puzzled about how someone as powerful as her could be acquainted with Blade. Claire and Jessica are also curious. On that night, Blade was bathing Chu in the men's bath. Meanwhile, in the women's bath, Claire and Jessica were scrubbing Dion's body, which was out of reach. They took this opportunity to inquire about her relationship with Blade. Feeling flustered, Dion explained that she had only recently met Blade for the first time. Arnie's, who was also in the women's bath, remembered that earlier in the day, Dion had mentioned that Blade was an old friend of hers. Even Maria was curious about Blade's past. Feeling uneasy, Blade suddenly entered the women's bath area. Arnie's, of course, panicked at Blade's presence. Jessica assured them that there's no need to worry about Blade, stating that his thinking is like that of a five-year-old. To prove her point, Jessica even dropped her towel in front of Blade, and as expected, Blade didn't react at all. Dion then recalled that Blade had the same kind of reaction when they first met. When Blade tried to stop her, Maria suddenly transformed into Mount Aholdenback. Dion began to recount the story. Initially, when Dion saw Blade's appearance, she thought he was a wild animal. Blade didn't say much and mistook Dion for a horse. He even bit Dion's rear end. Dion then showed the bite mark on her rear end from Blade. Several years later, Dion trained both physically and mentally. Eventually, she was able to fight alongside the hero. Sophie tried to reassure Blade, saying that no one realized the hero was Blade. Dion also boasted because she had been ridden by the hero. However, during the battle against the Demon King, Dion wasn't taken along. She couldn't accompany the hero until the end. At that time, Dion felt she wasn't strong enough. Hence, she continued her training. Meanwhile, Blade still remained skeptical of Sophie's words. Sophie herself was quite certain since people thought the hero was an older individual. Sophie stated that this matter was their secret. Unfortunately, Blade mentioned that there was one more person who knew which was Mount. This sudden revelation upset Sophie. A few days later, Blade and Arnest were shopping together in the town, also buying something for Dion. Arnest was still curious about what the connection between Blade and Dion was. Suddenly, 
A submerged flew over the city. Blade was unfamiliar with the creature. Arnas then explained that the submerged was one of the four elemental birds. The only elemental birds that Blade knew were the Thunderbird and the Phoenix. Until now, there had been no records of submerged attacking humans. However, for some reason, this submerged descended and destroyed a carriage. After that, it flew away. They realized that there were actually two Simurks. Arnest was puzzled by why a submerged would attack humans. However, Blade realized that the submerged attacked the carriage, not humans. Blade had a hunch that the king might know something about this. Later in the evening, Arnest stormed into the headmaster's room with anger. She wanted to know what the king was hiding. The king asked why she accused him of being involved, and Blade explained that the submerged attacked a cargo carriage. Blade realized that Dion had also brought cargo carriages to the royal palace before, so they wanted to know what was in the king's carriage. With an innocent tone, the king said that it contained eggs to be precise submerged eggs. He mentioned that he just wanted to borrow the eggs for a while. His wife then suggested that the king explain the situation. Reluctantly, he started explaining. To hatch submerged eggs, there are two conditions that need to be met. First, the eggs must be at an elevation equivalent to a 10,000-year-old sacred tree. Second, the eggs must be bathed in the light of the setting sun. However, it seems that the submerged they saw is making a nest for the first time. The nesting location is unfavorable, and if it stays that way, the eggs won't hatch. So, the king is actually trying to help the submerged. He ordered them to assist the submerged if they want to become heroes or surpass that. The next day, Blade and Arnest gathered other students to fight against the submerged. The goal was not just to win, but to buy time until sunset. They needed to keep the submerged away from its egg. Meanwhile, the egg would be taken up to the palace using an elevator. If the plan succeeded, the egg would hatch. With that in mind, they began executing their plan. They baited the submerged using an empty carriage placed in an evacuated area. Most direct physical attacks didn't have much effect on the submerged. However, Blade had an idea to overcome this. The students used divine metal traps to restrain the submerged. The traps weren't unbreakable, but the objects used to hold the traps could be pulled by the submerged, buying them more time. Next, Chu attacked one of the submerged with her fire breath. However, the submerged remained strong enough to withstand her flames. They also received help from out of fight against it. However, even after being attacked, the submerged didn't surrender. Not stopping there, Arnest used her demon form to provide assistance. Until finally, evening arrived, and they only needed to transport the egg using the elevator. However, for some reason, the elevator stopped halfway. Unfortunately, one of the submerged realized that the egg was in the royal palace. The students present their ass blade to go and take the egg to the top. They would handle the situation there. Seeing this, Blade was reminded of how his former companions, when they were heroes, had done something similar. After that, Blade quickly ran along the palace walls to retrieve the egg. As it turned out, even with just 15% of his strength, it was quite challenging for him. Coincidentally, Dion also ran along the wall to meet Blade. She asked him to get on her back. At that moment, Blade opened up about feeling the same way he did when he was a hero. His companions used to let him go ahead on his own. However, this time he wasn't alone. When he fought the Demon King, Blade did it all by himself. But now he had many friends. Of course, Dion was one of them as well. Upon reaching the elevator, Blade felt that he couldn't carry the giant egg while running along the wall. Dion had an idea to address this. She would push Blade's back so that he could still carry the egg. Thus, they finally reached the top of the palace. There, the king was already waiting. Unfortunately, the other submerged still realized that its egg had been taken there. Nevertheless, the king instructed them to leave the rest of him. His wife explained that the king had been saved by a submerged in the past. He had always been thinking about how to repay the favor. Despite his good intentions, the submerged seemed angry. It threw the king, causing him to bounce off the egg. This nearly led to the egg falling if Blade hadn't caught it. Suddenly, Sophie arrived and used her created hero's power, specifically the power to stop time. 
Sophie could only hold it for five seconds, but that was enough for Blade. He then used his Dragon Eater towards the submerged. The attack didn't kill it, but it bought them enough time for the egg to hatch. Finally, the awaited moment arrived, and the egg had hatched. It turned out that there were two baby Simurgs inside. No wonder the egg was heavy. A few days later, Blade and Arnis attempted to ride the two baby Simurgs. Their parents also seemed to have calmed down. In this way, Blade's circle of friends expanded once again.